Vinyl and Octavia Watch a Godzilla Movie by General Snaz It's movie night, Octavia! Vinyl exclaimed, bouncing through the front door, hovering a movie beside her. You know what this means, right? I have to sit through two hours of drivel with you, Octavia replied coldly. Nah, you get to sit through two hours of awesome with me. I can hardly contain the enthusiasm. Wait, is is that a VHS cassette? Octavia asked, noticing the tape. Uh-huh, Vinyl answered. Did, did you rent it? Octavia asked hesitantly. Yeah, it's movie night. That means renting movies. Vinyl, it's not the 90s. No pony rents VHS tapes anymore. Where in Equestria did you find a store that had- Enough talk, Vinyl interrupted her friend. Get the popcorn started. I'll go get the snuggling blanket. She darted off to get the aforementioned sheets. Octavia just sighed to get the popcorn from the cabinet and tossed it into the microwave. The two ponies were soon snuggled under a warm layer of blankets. Vinyl magically flicked the lights and hovered the tape over to the VHS player and... Oh, we don't have a VHS player, Vinyl realized. Oh, how dreadful! What an absolute disaster! It seems our scheduled film night must be cancelled! Octavia replied smugly. Oh well, I suppose I'll turn in early then. Ah, no worries. I got this. Vinyl confidently pulled out her phone and speed dialed a certain number. The pony on the other end picked up. Yo, PP, need a favor. Have you got a VHS player? Before they could say any more, the door burst open and Pinkie Pie bounced in. Oh, Vinyl, you're so lucky! The pink pony said, as she trotted over to the far wall. I have VHS players stored all over Ponyville. In case of VHS player emergencies. She lifted up the poster of Britney Spears on the wall to reveal a secret hole in the house. She pulled out a dusty, argnic contraption. See? She beamed, holding up the player. All right, Pinky. Vinyl cheered. Oh, joy. Octavia mumbled. Wait. How long has that hole been there? The pony set up the video player, and despite the clock on it constantly flashing 12 o'clock, they were ready to watch. After Pinky left, not willing to sit still for the movie, the two settled in to start. What movie is this? Octavia asked, as the studio's credits appeared on screen. It's a Godzilla movie! Vinyl excitedly beamed. Godzilla? That overgrown lizard thing? Octavia asked, disappointed. He's not a lizard, Octavia. He's a mutant, dinosaur, radioactive monster thing. His origins kind of change from movie to movie. It just depends. What? So the filmmakers couldn't even keep their story consistent? That's not it. It's... Oh, shh. It's starting. Vinyl shushed her friend and bounced excitedly. The credits started to roll, and Octavia noticed that there were two sets in them on screen. One set in the middle, in a language she couldn't understand, and another at the bottom, in English. Why is it showing two pairs of credits? Octavia asked. Oh, it's, uh, it's an unedited subtitled version, Vinyl replied, hoping Octavia wouldn't mind. What? You mean this whole film will be in Japanese? Octavia responded, disappointed still. Why in Equestria didn't you get a dubbed version? No, Octavia, Vinyl defended her decision. The original version is better. I don't see how that is possible. Are they not essentially the same film? Octavia said flatly. What? No. The, the original actors put a lot more motion into their... Like acting and stuff, Vinyl lectured. The voice dubbers just do a crappy job, and they never match up with the lips. Octavia just rolled her eyes and shook her head. 
If I ever wanted to spend an evening reading, I would have gone to Twilight's, she mumbled. She waited patiently for the credits to finish, and the title flashed on screen. Godzilla vs. King Dragondon! What is a King Dragon Dune? Octavia asked Final. It's pronounced Dragon Dawn, Octavia. And shh, you'll find out. The two ponies watched the opening scene. Final continued to bounce, obviously ready for action. But Octavia simply stared. A few minutes went by, and nothing of particular interest happened. The story began to follow an ordinary pony as they worked in a laboratory on a radio-controlled hover machine shaped like a bird. Octavia patiently waited for a Godzilla to show, but he didn't seem to make an early appearance. Where is that Godzilla creature? Octavia turned to Vinyl in the dark. He's under that mountain that they showed earlier. He was trying to get out. Didn't you see that? Vinyl explained. Mountain? It showed a mountain briefly, then changed to a close-up of a tiny pile of dirt exploding, Octavia replied, confused. That was the mountainside. Godzilla was under it. No, that was a pile of dirt, no bigger than his crotch. Okay, look, Vinyl lectured again. They didn't have computers when they made this movie, okay? They didn't have CGI, okay? They did their best and made it look like a mountain by blowing up dirt piles, okay? Vinyl continuously poked Octavia through the covers as she explained. All right, all right. Goodness. Octavia backed down. The film continued. On screen, the overly handsome scientist Stallion eventually met a beautiful mare reporter who was covering a story. The two were quite awkward in their conversations, obviously quite keen to each other. But unbeknownst to them, a pair of thug ponies and nice suits have been trailing the reporter. Who are these suspicious stallions? Octavia inquired. Goons of the space ponies, Vinyl answered excitedly. Space ponies? I thought this film was about a dinosaur, not extraterrestrials. It has both, okay? The space ponies are the bad guys, Vinyl revealed. Octavia accepted this without any more protest. The movie continued, and much to her surprise, Godzilla finally made an appearance. The infamous King of Monsters emerged with a tremendous roar from a pile of dirt. Ah oh, yeah! There's the big G! Final squealed, shaking Octavia. He... Is... is that a pony in a suit? Octavia asked, dumbfounded at what she saw. I told you, Octavia. This was made a long time ago. They didn't have computers back then, Vinyl replied. Just look at him, though. They did a good job, right? The suit is awesome. He looks bad, Flank. Sure, Vinyl. Whatever you say. Octavia was still unconvinced. The lumbering monster scaled down the mountain and jumped into the sea and began to stroll across it. Shortly afterward, the space thugs finally attacked the reporter they had been trailing, and the handsome scientist defended her in a brutal hoof fight without any music and with a single camera angle felt strangely without suspense. Vinyl... This scene, Octavia started. Different decade, deal with it, Vinyl interjected, chewing on her popcorn. Octavia sighed and continued to watch. After following the thugs in a musicless car chase, the hero returned to the reporter, and she revealed she had been carrying a mysterious silver object that her archaeologist father had discovered. Meanwhile, the Navy sighted Godzilla, the monster continued to cross the ocean, strolling along the surface. Now, wait just a minute, Octavia interrupted. He looks like he's walking. Even if he is the size they claimed, couldn't possibly reach the ocean floor. 
He's... swimming, Octavia, Vinyl replied, unsure of the issue. No, it's obvious he's walking, Octavia spat coldly. Well, duh, the pony in the suit is walking, but Godzilla is swimming. Don't you get that? Vinyl exclaimed with confidence. Octavia just planted her face in the covers around her and sighed. The story continued. The scientist and his friend went to the reporter's father's house, only to find the place wrecked and the archaeologist dead. While inspecting the scene, the two friends were jumped by the thug ponies. Another intense fight broke out, and they triumphed after badly wounding one of the goons. They tried to interrogate the their prisoner, but he died and revealed his true form, a species of intelligent space slugs. Slugs? Octavia proclaimed. The aliens are slugs? Yeah, they're toys from the space sector X, Vinyl cheered. Octavia didn't question it further, and the movie continued. The two ponies left the house to find the reporter being captured by the space slug thug. They gave chase but failed, but more importantly, Godzilla hit land. After a splendid montage of army ponies getting ready for combat, they finally engaged the King of Monsters. A massive battle broke out. Tanks burred the monster, and Raider had shocked him with electric power. Are they using toy tanks? Octavia asked, interrupting the drama. No, they're using model tanks, Vinyl defended. But, but they just showed footage of real tanks when those soldiers were running around, protested Octavia. Couldn't they have just filmed those tanks firing shots, then shown Godzilla getting hit by those... firecrackers? What? Then the scene would look fake. You can't disengage the audience like that, Octavia, Vinyl replied smugly. Disengage the... fake? Duh! Octavia face-planted in the covers again. Just... just give me some popcorn. The movie continued on, finally showing the aliens' secret base. The space ponies have retrieved the silver object from the reporter and placed it onto the special dais. It activated and unleashed an unspeakable horror. King Dragondon. He emerged from his slumber under a mountain. The terrible two-headed dragon took flight at the space pony's command and began to destroy the nearby city. A terrible montage of frightened ponies and senseless destruction occurred. Why doesn't Celestia stop him? Octavia asked, unimpressed. She... uh... Doesn't exist in this universe, Octavia answered sheepishly. What? No Celestia? How does the sun work then? Or what about Luna? Does she not exist? I can only suspend my disbelief so much, Final. Just... Just... Just watch it, okay? The scientist pony and his friend found the alien's hideout, and using his hoverbird invention, he knocked out the guards. They barged into the lair, fought the space ponies, and rescued the mare. However, destroying the dais and the silver pendants did nothing to stop King Dragondon, as they saw him from the monitor. They left the lair and saw Godzilla fighting the army. They approached the commander in charge to present him with a plan. What? Octavia protested once again. No army official would let unknown civilians walk into a battle zone like that, especially not into their command center. Why didn't the guards stop him? Octavia, they had important information that could save the entire world, Vinyl explained. That's irrelevant. No pony should convince a soldier to let them into a restricted area, especially during battle. Oh, come on, just accept it. You're complaining too much, Vinyl said, getting aggraviated. Complaining? I am not complaining. I am criticizing. Do you want to see complaining? Octavia asked. No! Good, because I don't really feel like showing you, Octavia admitted. 
The pair continued to watch. The scientist's plan was to use his hover invention to lead Godzilla away to battle with King Dragondon. Is that a string holding that thing up? Octavia said, watching the small mechanical bird. Shh, be quiet. Oh, here it comes, Vinyl squealed. The plan worked. As the two monsters saw each other, they began to fight. What followed was an intense slow-motion slap battle to the death. Those punches don't look like they have much weight behind them, Octavia pointed out. Who cares? Look, they're totally wrecking the city, Final cheered. Godzilla and King Dragondon continuously smashed buildings as their fight progressed. Ha, oh, yeah, this is so awesome! Vinyl bounced up and down in excitement. Look, Octavia, look, did you see that? Godzilla just threw Dragon Gone into a skyscraper! Ah, oh, you're in for it now! He's gonna blow you up! Godzilla proceeded to summon his atomic energy from his spines and launched a nuclear breath attack at Dragon Dawn, who then exploded into a spectacular flash of fire. Wahoo! Vinyl continued. The movie reached its end. The scientist, his friend, the reporter, and the military all watched from a cliff as Godzilla walked back into the sea, thankful the battle was over. The credits started to roll. Ha ha! That was epic! So, what'd you think, Octavia? Vinyl excitedly asked as she magically flicked the lights back on. Well, Octavia started. I think it was a film about the dangers of continuous arrogant scientific advertisements that could develop weapons of immense and terrible power that without proper control could threaten the very existence of our species and although these weapons could be used to stop the aggressions of outside invaders, they come up with a terrible cost, namely the destruction of much of what is achieved and at the end an immeasurable and unforgivable number of lives. Vinyl just stared. Did... Did you see how Godzilla blew that guy up? Yes, Vinyl. Yes, I did. Thank you.